Hey everybody, welcome back to some TikTok drama that's colder than Canadian winter. And speaking from experience, it, it's cold. It's, it's really cold over here. Today, this customer came in with a bunch of shopping bags on the verge of tears, looking like she just needed anybody to ask her if she was okay. Luckily for her, I was having a good day. I was ready to listen, all ears. Let's get into this retail therapy. She ends up telling me that her husband had an affair with her half sister's mother and they're having a baby so she was like yeah i just need to change my life change everything i'm like absolutely buy everything and make sure it's on him Ugh. she was really nice though so we end up talking for like over 30 minutes about everything like fashion traveling tiktok videos she asked me for makeup advice we were talking about friendships family dynamics and she even asked to exchange social media and she followed me on here. And we really did vibe. Like, I didn't feel like she was trying to give me to sell no Monet or nothing. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I like you. After a while, she pauses and she looks me up and down and she asked me, can I ask you something a little invasive? So I'm like, we're all friends here. I'm an overshare. What's up? Have you ever tried Ozempic? no why would she ask me that so no. i'm like no i'm not interested have you tried ozempic so she's looking in the mirror and she's like hmm, i don't really think i need it but it'll probably really help you out if you're interested ah! is this bitch a movie villain she really worried about the wrong belly when her future niece few and her kids gonna be calling people auntie mommy and uncle daddy ah! And she definitely followed me on here and I definitely do not know her name. So, hey girl. <laughs> oh yeah. Why is it always the people that should be minding their own business that seem to be in everybody's business? It's like, girl, figure out your own You clearly got a lot going on. You shouldn't be worried about anybody else's stomach. Imagine you're just kind of like having a conversation with somebody and like you think you made a new friend, everything's good, everything's great. And then they just like slightly fat shame you and tell you that you need to like inject yourself every week to lose some weight. You need to be worried about what the hell's going on in your life, not what's going on with my body. Wow, how are you not embarrassed? How are you not embarrassed? Are you not? Or I would be. I'd, uh, if I were you, I'd be embarrassed. Imagine someone just reaming you out, yelling at you, and they just lose their teeth mid-conversation. <laughs> if that's not instant karma, I don't know what is. His laugh is so funny, too. Let's just... <laughs> 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 Indeed. To lose your teeth in an argument and have someone laugh at you in a Seth Rogen laugh is a double whammy. <laughs> if it wasn't bad enough, you just got laughed at by someone who has a Seth Rogen laugh. <laughs> it's time to go home. So Stormy Reed's dad, pictured above, walked out on his tab last night, and this is why I don't get impressed when celebrities or celebrity-associated people come to the establishment where I work. Around midnight, he walks in with a beautiful woman. They sit down at the bar. She's cool. She's ordering food. He orders his usual and old fashioned, which I bring to him. Her food comes out. We're talking. She thinks I'm funny. We're having a good little time. He orders another round and then he's trying to order drinks for other people. Good thing I kept their own tab to themselves. Then my manager, you know, he always puts a little discount on his tab because we do appreciate the service. Then he signals like this, like he's about to leave. I'm like, hold on one second. You do have a tab. I present to him his tab. You guys, this man looks at his tab, sits it down, looks at me and walks straight towards the door. I see him walk out the door. You guys, I run to my manager because I already know the place that I work. I tell my manager, hey, Stormy Reed's father, he's walking out the door. My manager rushes his butt to the door catches him comes back to me and then he says oh he's coming right back he's just walking that lady to the car don't worry chi cool i'm like all right comes back about five minutes later you guys says that the man left what he's like we gotta wait for the higher up manager to get there 
the higher up manager gets there i'm ready to go now you guys i am at my wits end that this grown rich man really walked out on his tab but to top it all off you guys do you know that my manager really said oh that's your responsibility no he walked out on you so that's what's happening here in Atlanta, Georgia, you guys. And that's why I am not impressed when these quote unquote celebrities come into establishments because they always are the ones who think that they deserve some special treatment, don't want to pay for their tab, and much less are going to even leave a tip. I mean, if that's really what happened, then by all means, call him out, girl. Is he really a celebrity if he's just her dad? I also think her name is Storm Reed, not Stormy. But wait, there's more. The plot twist of the century. So Stormy Reed's dad, pictured above, walked out on his tab last night and- <laughs> Girl, you are the same server that refused to serve me and my friends. We came out to that same location and we had to work with another server, which the girl was A1. The food is absolutely great. But you did not want to wait on us. Oh. And then you changed your mind when you saw T.I. walk past me, dab me off, and ask me how I've been. Then you wanted to be the server. So, um, and then why you got to mention Storm and Dad? That man got a name. Period. Just he's, that's his daughter don't mean nothing. You be running to them celebrity tables. And uh, back in the day, they used to say, that's what you get. No. Oh, yeah. Wait, didn't you, didn't she just say that she doesn't like celebrity tables? And this is why I don't get impressed when celebrities or celebrity associated people come to the establishment where I work. This you, girl? Is that you? <laughs> Oh, you got called out. You were expecting a big tip, weren't you? Okay, but to, to be fair, if she's being truthful and he did walk out on his tab, then nobody has the right to walk out on their tab. Especially not a celebrity. Like, I feel like y'all are supposed to be rich. And not only that, I think the average person could walk out on their tab and probably get away with it. But when you're famous, everybody knows who you are. How are you gonna walk out on your tab when everyone knows who you are? But ain't that just funny? God, I love TikTok, the algorithm be algorithming. I adore it. Is that his stuff? Wait, wait, wait. The taste of love and sweet. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we're coming to karaoke night. With a bag of stuff. I felt for you like a child. I'm assuming he cheated. It is he cheated, right? <laughs> it's the fact that the guy singing karaoke is singing Ring of Fire. <laughs> Y'all manifested that. She came in with the ring of fire. So what do we know about this instance, okay? We've got a woman who walks into a bar with a bag of clothes, starts yelling at somebody. I'm guessing he cheated. She could be just a random person off the street, but he cheated, come on. <laughs> you brought it to the bar, babe. You brought that bag of clothes to the bar. How did we get here, you might ask? Here's the worst travel story you've ever heard, how we are ghosted by Egypt Air, spent two days in an airport, made 300 new friends on WhatsApp, and how there is no record that it ever happened. We are on a direct flight from Washington, D.C. to Cairo. We show up three hours early, we check our bags, we go to the lounge, and we start having a few glasses of wine. One of the attendants in the lounge comes up and tells us that our flight is 12 hours delayed. Now, this is traveling in 2023. We understand. Things happen. Now, looking back, there were some red flags at this time that we definitely should have noticed, but we were a bottle and a half of wine deep, so we just didn't. A 12-hour delay means we take off at 2 a.m. So our flight disappears from the board. It doesn't get moved to 2 a.m. It just disappears. Um, our flight also disappears from the Egypt Air website. You type our flight and our flight number in, no flight found. So I am with my best friend. We are actually headed out on a girl's trip. We decide to grab a hotel and get a few hours of sleep. We are very obedient people and we follow direction exceptionally well. So we do show back up at the airport at 2 a.m. Now it's 2 a.m. We are wandering the Dulles airport. There's nobody at the check-in counter, so we go through security. At our gate, we meet up with about half of the passengers on our flight. Where is the other half? I don't know. They obviously have information that we do not have. There have been no calls, no texts, no emails. And like I said, the flight has just disappeared from the website. 
So now it's 4 a.m. We have slept in the chapel for a few hours. We decide to go back to the hotel because it's very clear this flight is not taking off tonight. We decide to go back to the airport at 7 a.m. Why 7 a.m.? We have absolutely no idea. There have been absolutely no updates. It's just a random time that we chose. Near the check-in counter, which this check-in counter no longer belongs to Egypt Air, it now belongs to a different airline, we meet up with a lot of the passengers on our flight who we now recognize. At this point, we find out that there has been a WhatsApp group created amongst the passengers. So we obviously invite our way into that and find out that the passengers that were flying first class were set up with a hotel through Egypt Air. That hotel concierge was getting calls from Egypt Air with updates. Hence, why only half of the flight showed up in the middle of the night because the other half were in this WhatsApp thread and found out that we were not going to be taking off that night. Wow. Why did they not send an email or update the online information? Just so forget we'll about you. You didn't pay for the first class ticket, babe. We're not going to treat you like a human being. Point as passengers, we decide to divide and conquer. A third of us are going to stay at the hotel. A third of us are going to stay before security. And a third of us are going to go through security and try to find somebody. And this is when we learn that there is not actually an Egypt Air employee in the airport at that time. Now airport management is getting involved because why on earth are 300 passengers just, just roaming, roaming around? So an Egypt Air employee comes <laughs> to the airport and says that we will get another update at midnight. That is 36 hours after we were supposed to take off. And we're not taking off, it's just an update. This is when you see the video that I posted at the very beginning. Everyone is just screaming, we are rioting. But at the end of the day, all I wanted were my bags back. They were refusing to unload the plane. Stop, yeah, you're I did stuff. not have an extra pair of underwear in my carry-on. No. I had nothing in my carry-on except makeup. Okay, this is why I always carry an extra set of clothes in my carry-on. I think that my bags have been lost like Quite a few times. Quite a few times. It's all like if you have an air tag and you can kind of see, like you arrive and then you see, oh, like I love air tags and I hate them because now you know as soon as you get to your destination that your bags are not there. So I always, always, always keep makeup and underwear because it's like this. I'd been living in the same clothing. I just want my bag back. And that's what everyone wants. These are some screenshots from the lovely WhatsApp chat. Do we have any confirmed news so far? Is anyone getting the bag? Is there a flight happening? Do we have any idea? Because no, we've gotten absolutely I can't no get updates. over that. There is no one from Egypt Air in the airport. Not one person, not one employee, not a, not a pilot, nobody. Now, after everyone was screaming and yelling at the gate, she said she was gonna talk to the engineering crew and get us an update at 2 p.m. This was our 2 p.m. update. They do not have an update <laughs> and they do not know when they will have an update. That's a great update. What? Here's the update. We don't have an update. Thank you for that update that I just waited 36 hours for. My friend and I opted to be through security so that we could partake in the lounge wine. And so I was just, you know, I was just stirring a pot. So at this point, somebody comes out and says that they are going to hand write individual bag tag numbers down to pull bags out of the plane for passengers who wait. Wait, the plane's still there? We wait seven hours, 15 bags come out. My friends come out. Mine does not. It is now midnight. We are leaving the airport completely defeated, wondering if we are ever actually going to take off. And a woman starts ch chasing us, like down the street, says, are you on the Egypt Air flight? I recognize her. She's on the flight. I recognize her because now we are on the <laughs> uh, I say, yes, we are on this flight. She goes, we are taking off at noon tomorrow. Where did you get How does she know and you don't? She goes, well, I work for Frontier. So I have access to like some back end information. What? And we have a flight path. For the first time ever, we have a flight path. So I immediately update our 300 new friends on WhatsApp that we are taking off at noon. Did we ever get an email call, text, anything from Egypt Air? Absolutely wow. Not. But we all show up the next morning at 8 a.m. to check in. We are very pleased to see that there's an entire check-in desk waiting for us. How they knew we were going to show up, I do not know. <laughs> so we check in. We get our boarding pass. We go down the stairs to TSA, and we see all of the people who have checked in before us waiting to get through security, and everyone is screaming at each other. Egypt Air printed the wrong date on <gasps> our boarding pass. Stop. It was backdated two days ago. And TSA says you cannot enter security with a boarding pass from two days ago. Stop. Egypt Air, TSA, fight it out. They eventually put a star on our boarding pass, and that is what allows us to go through. Now we get on the plane. We end up being an additional two hours delayed. So at this point, we are 50 zero hours delayed from our original departure. However, we take off. You think that's where the story ends, but you would be wrong. The entire time we are in the airport, we are getting updates like this. Welcome, you have arrived. We had not taken off at this point. <laughs> Even third-party tracking apps are saying that we have landed. Landed over two days ago. This is while we were still in Washington, D.C. So now everyone is filing for reimbursement through travel insurance for like the hotels, food, etc. And some people didn't even take the flight, so they're just requesting a refund. 
but there is no record that this flight took off late. Our boarding passes were backdated. We never got anything via email. The flight disappeared from the website. Everything that we learned was through a random WhatsApp chat that was created or through a hotel concierge or a random Frontier employee. So nobody can get any money back. But I will say there is one positive thing to come out of this trip. Your buddies! Everyone is inviting us to celebrations. Everyone is asking to send pictures of their family vacations. And while I would never fly Egypt Air again, I think this sums it up perfectly. It wasn't about the trip, but the friends you made along the way. Oh, I love that. I love a happy ending to a 50 hour airplane delay. (laughs) How many glasses of wine did you consume? Be honest. I'd be like at about a glass of wine every hour, only taking time off to sleep. I feel like they just like didn't put it on the record so they wouldn't have to compensate you, you know? Cause if like they acknowledge it, then they're- (laughs) Girl, I'd sue so fast. I wouldn't, I'm a pushover. (laughs) Airports are literally the worst places on earth. To be back and forth and stuck in one for 50 hours straight, I would lose my mind. I don't know how you did it, but I'm glad you made 300 friends that you are probably going to stop talking to over the course of time. But still, it's nice to have. It's nice to know. I would not want to be involved in a 300 person group chat. Can my daughter have the window seat? It's her first time on a plane. This has happened to me on multiple flights that parents have been like, can my kids sit by the window? It's their first time. And I came up with a perfect comeback and it worked both times. I'm gonna use it the next time it happens. So when a parent comes up and is like, oh, can my kid have the window seat? It's their first time flying. I just look them dead in the eye, straight on. And I say, yeah, me too. That was a menacing stare. That was a very menacing stare. I just feel like that argument doesn't really work anymore. Like, you know, the switching the seats argument. We all have to check in like 24 hours before to pick our seat. And honestly, at this point, you gotta pay for the seat that you want. So asking someone to switch seats with you is like, okay, but like I literally paid to sit here. It's not my fault you didn't check in on time. Madam, your poor planning does not constitute an emergency on my part. Ma'am, ma'am, your poor planning does not constitute an emergency for me. You'll see him in Paris. Go sit down. Look how unreal these potatoes look. Babes, what's crazy and unreal is you scamming people saying you had gastric cancer because you wanted $150. It's absolutely unreal. This was back in 2017 when she was 21 years old, okay? At 21 years old, I wasn't like, you know what? Let me fake that I have cancer. Even her ex-friends came out and literally said that she scams common folk and she scams her friends. You know, I shouldn't be shocked, but the amount of big influencers that turn out to be awful people with shady horrible pass. Whoa. I mean, lying about a disease that millions of people die from. Wow. All because you need money and you don't want to get a job. The scummiest of the scums, babe. It's unreal. I can't believe it. And the amount of people that are like, well, she did this in 2017. She was young and she learned from it. Acting that wasn't like that she long was a 12, ago. 13, 15 year old girl at the time. Anyways, babes, let me know what you think in the comments because I'm really disgusted. How are you not embarrassed? You created a GoFundMe for 150 quid. I'm sorry, what cancer costs 150 quid to fight? Did you really need 150 quid that bad that you were willing to fake cancer? (laughs) How are you not? 